Hi, my name is Rob Weller. Um, I'm a principal scientist at LGC. I head up a team of scientists who look after the bioanalysis of large molecules using LCMS technologies. What began my interest in mass spectrometry was that it was the detection tool used in my first job. So I have this natural curiosity to learn more about the, the tools that I'm using and that's kind of driven me through my career really to figure out what's going on with mass spectrometry and how it can be applied. So we uh, mainly concentrate on bottom-up uh, quantitation of large molecules, uh, do a small amount of uh, top-down uh, quantitation on larger peptides um, and that's uh, primarily focused on therapeutics uh, and a small amount of biomarkers as well. Um, our main in uh, research uh, interests at the moment are around the workflows uh, for um, bottom-up approaches. So trying to implement automation in those workflows is a, is a major interest from a CRO perspective at the moment, and trying to increase the speed and the robustness and the general efficiency within the lab. Um, and another area that we're interested in is around trying to increase the selectivity uh, of the, the kind of analytical side. So um, we're looking at uh, various ways of doing this with high resolution mass spectrometry, um, eye mobility and um, two dimensional chromatography as well. So obviously the main technology that we use is uh, LC mass spectrometry. Um, our labs are equipped primarily with uh, tandem quadrupole instruments. So these obviously provide uh, very good levels of sensitivity and specificity for uh, our workflows. Downsides, however, when we're looking at large molecules is that uh, the specificity that we get with unit resolution is often not enough. So that can sometimes limit the sensitivity that we're able to achieve uh, with these assays. Another technology that we use with large molecule CMS is um, protein digestion. So we typically use trypsin to digest our proteins. Uh, it's got a high degree of specificity. Um, so we know that we're gonna generate the same surrogate peptides each time. Um, disadvantages with protein digestion are of course the workup. So we have to go through the uh, denaturation reduction alkylation as well as the digestion. So there's multiple steps, multiple sources of um, error as well. So the last technology that we uh, use quite often in the group is immunoaffinity. So um, this offers a high degree of specificity by being able to uh, pull out a particular protein of interest by um, using a specific antibody against it. Um, drawbacks of this technique uh, are the, around the, the actual reagents. So sometimes the costs can be excessive or we don't have a particular reagent available for uh, that use. So there are, I guess, two main challenges that I could probably identify um, when using this, this technology. Um, and the first one is uh, the selectivity. So there's always a demand from our clients to push detection limits as low as we can go. Um, and we really struggle to achieve those lower detection limits, um, generally because of a selectivity issue. So we're um, looking at ways to improve the selectivity with the high res mass spec, with uh, the use of 2 DLC or um, eye mobility. So the second major challenge is around the time it actually takes us to perform these extractions. So with uh, bottom-up uh, quantitation, uh, as I mentioned before, we have to denature, reduce, alkylate, digest. Uh, it's a multi-step approach, it all takes time. So um, one of our key focuses at the moment is trying to um, optimise this, uh, investigate the new generation of um, enzymes that can uh, enable us to work at high temperatures to achieve digestion in a, in a faster time and also without needing to reduce an alkylate as well. So we work in a, a highly regulated environment already. Uh, we have guidance for small molecule by LCMS and also guidance for large molecules by LBA, but nothing in place for large molecules by LCMS currently. Um, we work off white papers, uh, which kind of take parts of both. 
and uh, apply them um, to large molecules by LCMS. Um, and I think um, it's about time that we saw some guidance come out for uh, large molecules by LCMS, certainly for PK. And we, we also see a similar situation for biomarkers at the moment. So there's a lot of um, discussion in industry about trying to find the standardised best way forward for um, biomarkers validations. And I think given time and um, experience with um, filing these to the regulators, we'll, we should start to see some guidance coming through. So I hope that we will have an established technique for uh, PK, for biomarkers, and also the emerging area of immunogenicity um, with the, the regulations and the guidance in place uh, to suit each of those respectively. So I hope to see uh, more improvements in the workflows uh, to the, the bottom-up quantitation approaches uh, for a, a more seamless and efficient uh, bottom-up workflow approach. Or even going further than that, hope to see more um, intact quantitation in the future so we can actually do away with these workflows and actually measure the, the protein directly without having to look at uh, surrogate peptides. So I guess I've been quite lucky in my early career um, because I got to train in both LBA and LCMS. So what I would say is to try and embrace the, uh, the two techniques and try to learn them if you're given the opportunity. What I'd also recommend is to um, challenge the norm. We work in quite a, a highly regulated environment and sometimes people just take that as a given. So we just do that because that's what, how it's always been done. So don't be afraid to challenge that norm.